Ashley and I'm back with another video and we're going to be doing a reaction to what cultures ten horror movies where evil wins and since it's October I thought I'd do maybe a couple more videos at least two since there's at least two more weeks before October is over and then let's for November and my birthday's in November so yeah um we're gonna be doing a reaction to what cultures video and if you're ready let's get started horror movies are ostensibly about evil sometimes it's flagrant evil sometimes it is insidious evil sometimes it is all children are oh, only shit. evil but it is always in there in some capacity that's because the sort of thematic threats that exist in other genres never really translate as scary. Yes, the global conquest presented in most action films clearly marks out the antagonist as actually bad, but they seldom have you scurrying behind the sofa and leaving bedroom lights on. Evil is always a required presence because horror movies are, when you break them down, moral tales. They thrive as a medium that encourages society to learn some valuable <laughs> lessons about how we I did finally see Kevin in the woods and it was hilariously great. In short, you can't beat evil unless it's there in the first place. And we're all born sinners, but that doesn't mean it always gets beaten. Many classic horror movies have contented themselves with presenting a terrifying story without having to wrap it up nicely at the end, making evil the star of the show from start to finish. Well, that's one way of getting a message across. I am the bad guy. He keeps showing Kevin in the woods. It's gonna be on the list. Along with uh, the one with the two gypsy. The omen. If there's one thing better than an ending where evil one. wins, it's one where the forces of good unknowingly have a major part in helping it to do so. While I'm not publicly advocating for the murder of all young children who cause a scene at a birthday party, I'm sure it's entirely excusable in cases where they're revealed to literally be the Antichrist. So it goes that after losing their newborn infant in childbirth, and then secretly adopting Damien at the suggestion of a priest, American diplomat Robert Thorne realizes he might have dropped a bit of a clanger. As a result, Robert hauls his adoptive son onto an altar in an attempt to ritually sacrifice him in some OTT apology to the man upstairs. <laughs> at the crucial moment, though, the police arrive, and seeing a child about to be given the ready meal film lid before microwaving treatment, gun Robert down. Smash cut to the funeral, and Damien is seen walking off into the sunset with no less than the President of the United States. Well done, officers. Great. Nine, the descent. All right, I take it back. Great if there's movie. one thing better than an ending where evil wins, it is one where you genuinely think the good guys have won, only to have the salty chips of hope snatched away from you by the swooping seagull of reality. Desperate to escape a series of underground kept Bruh, when she smashed her prey, I think she smashed her leg or something, she was like, bitch, this is all your fucking fault. So I'm just going to leave you down here to deal with it. Okay. Peace. <laughs> Caves, our plucky gang of spelunkers are slowly whittled down by a subspecies of vicious cave-dwelling monsters. Throats are ripped out, skulls are bashed in, some of them get eaten alive. But at long last, Sarah manages to scramble her way up to freedom. She finds her car, drives away, and all looks about as well as can be expected. Then, of course, it's revealed she is just hallucinating. She comes to and finds herself back in the dingy depths with nothing but a comforting vision of her dead daughter and an absurdly well-iced cake for company. Well... All right then, you win this one, crawlers. Eight, Eden Lake. <laughs> Arguably what's scarier than simply the fact that evil wins in Eden Lake is the believable way in which that it. evil unfolds. What's arguably even scarier than that still is... Is that a bunch of teenagers? Keto can do that too. I still want to try it though. Still is Michael Fassbender's accent. And mm -hmm. under the radar British horror gen, Eden Lake tells the story of a young couple seeking a romantic getaway in a remote part of the countryside. However, their attempts at enjoying the 18 minutes of direct sunlight that the country gets at the height of summer are interrupted by a gang of delinquent teenagers with attempts for violence. With Steve bleeding to death after proposing, 
Jenny makes a break for freedom, and by both her hand and their own, a number of the group are killed in the process. She crashes a car during the escape and awakens to find herself in the home of the children's parents. They are, unsurprisingly, uninterested in her side of the story, and the movie ends with three of them setting about him in a bathroom, while Yutin Chief Brett deletes the video evidence. It's pretty harrowing. 7. Wow. The Cabin in the Woods yeah. The Cabin in the Woods takes the cliched American monster slasher genre to its logical conclusion, the eradication of all humanity by an ancient 50-foot high living hand. Presenting us with the horror dynamic we all know and all love, a motley gang of a whore, an athlete, a scholar, a fool and a virgin, the film's words, not mine, find life spiraling entirely out of control in a the titular fool wasn't cabin, quite a fool in that and I loved it. Woods. Jackie was it like, not today, bitches. A part of a ritualistic sacrifice designed to appease a terrifying subterranean race of ancient deities. A happy ending of sorts is on the cards when Dana the Virgin is told she can freely escape the horrors if she is willing to kill Marty the Fool as the final part of the ceremony. In the end though, they both mutually decide that humanity isn't really worth saving, share a joint, and ungrudgingly await the global reckoning their decision is gonna bring about. Fair enough. Six. Jeepers Creepers. Being pursued by the Creeper, an ancient creature which awakens every 23rd spring for 23 days to feast on the fresh body parts of whichever humans smell the most like fear, the movie's never really a case of whether our protagonists will defeat it, but only whether they might survive it. They don't, for the most part, <laughs> after racking up a surprisingly meaty body count and laying waste to every on-duty officer in the local police station, the beastie police station, the beastie corners our terrified brother-sister combo. Deciding he can only carry one of them back to his hideout, Trish valiantly offers herself in place of her brother. However, after something the goods with a quick lick, the creeper remembers he hates being told what to do and flies away with Dowie instead. <laughs> he pulls his eyes out, hops into his truck, and merrily toots the horn as he drives off into the sunset. Or something to that effect, but anyway. Five. Drag me to hell. Comfortably Sam Raimi's second scariest work, the first of course being that jazz club scene from Spider-Man 3, Drag Me to Hell tells the story of an enraged woman named Ganoush and a bank employee named Christine she sentences to death. After denying Ganoush an extension on a mortgage payment, Ganoush curses a button from Christine's coat and imbues it with a dark spirit that causes grotesque hallucinations. Her life unravels, those around her begin to die, and in a matter of days, the demon will literally drag her, kicking and screaming, into the depths of hell. I'm not saying it's a bit of an overreaction, but I am thinking it incredibly loudly. Thinking she is successful. Right, it is, I mean, it's extreme. Like, she's just doing her job, lady. She would be out on the streets too if she didn't deny you. I mean, that's how you just gonna live in your house forever. He's gonna keep cursing people. Get a job, you bum. <laughs> pass the curse back onto the Ganoush woman, Christine somehow manages to mix up a small unmarked envelope that contains a button with a small unmarked envelope that contains a coin. A trivial mistake for a seamstress, a fatal one for her, as the demons immediately arrive to seal her fate. I mean, it is called drag me to hell, not hand me the correct parcel. Four. I saw the devil. After Kim Soo Jin is mutilated and murdered by serial killer Kyung Chul, the Secret Service agent tracks down, stalks, and begins to gradually torture his target in an effort to exact retribution. He knows his every move and routinely appears out of nowhere to save his victim and gravely wound him in the process. But he enjoys it too much, and after Kyung Chol overhears crucial information about Kim Soo Hyun's plan, he tracks down his father and his sister and kills and disfigures them respectively. This triggers the end game, and although Su Hyun enacts the ultimate punishment by having Kyung Chul's own family walk in on him as he's decapitated by his own guillotine, he suffers a total mental breakdown in the process. Ah, uh, I would bet! Having turned down several opportunities to bring him to justice, his own evil eventually wins out. By the time he realizes this, it's too late. Three, seven. Without question, still one What's of the greatest the endings in cinema history. <laughs> Seven still shocks to this day because of the stunning realization that you have not actually been watching the type of film that you think you have. For all 95% of it plays out like a sinister but nonetheless procedural police thriller, the whole thing is actually one man's twisted and perfectly executed plan to condemn the sinful world he sees around him. Having seen the grisly deaths of what he viewed to be the embodiments of gluttony, pride, lust, greed, and sloth, 
John Doe takes detectives Mills and Somerset out to a remote location to reveal his final two victims before promising to turn himself in and confess to everything. Then, in one of the most iconic moments in cinema, Macaulay arrives with a box containing the head of Detective Mills' wife. The twist is that Doe coveted the normal, happy life the detective had, making him the representation of envy. This unspeakable trauma pushes a grief-stricken Mills to gun him down on the spot, becoming wrath and like I haven't seen the movie before. From the very first I was a kid Evil though, so. Out in the end, but in truth, <laughs> It is one from the very start. Two, virtually every fan footage movie. Allow me a moment to play with your imagination here. Place yourself as one of the protagonists in a fan footage movie. In fact, let's go the whole hog with this and they place all died because the, the finish got found, right? Movie as the person holding the camera. Your hood in Cloverfield. Your Pablo in Rep. You're the woman with the leaky nose in Blair Witch. Now imagine you differently, and after your misadventures, you are safely and soundly returned home. Picture yourself standing in the middle of your house with the camera you've been clinging to during the ordeal still in your hand. Are you going to sit down and start to compile the footage, thus reliving the horrors you've just witnessed? No, you're very obviously not going to do that. You're going to either erase the footage or just simply stick the entire camera immediately into the toilet and bash it with a plunger until it fits around a U-bend. Fan footage movies only really work when evil is one. Characters are dead and the footage is literally found. Not politely handed over. That's not to say it never happens, but really, fan footage is a stockpile of evil wins by its very nature. One, the last house on the left. Now, you might be forgiven for thinking that the last house on the left has a reasonably heroic and roundly just ending, given that all the immensely very bad people's offense duly comes. However, is that really the message here? It is not. Things drastically spiral out of control when Krug and Co. return to their motel room and, being on the run from the authorities, realize that two young girls are there by invitation of Krug's son and they cannot be allowed to drop them in it. Paige is killed and Mari left for dead in a lake after making a break for freedom. After the baddies happen upon Mari's parents' holiday home seeking aid, the reality of the situation is revealed, with these horrible folk getting the tables turned on them entirely. While you're rooting for the parents, they're presented with the moral conundrum of simply escaping with a barely alive Mari, or, as it transpires, murdering a family and leaving Krug paralyzed with his head in a microwave. They could have overcome evil, but they simply became it instead. And that's our list. What are the horrors should be up here? Share your thoughts. And say I'm not that surprised by the list. I could have made two of them. I wouldn't have thought Jeep. Oh, I forgot about Jeepers Creepers because it kind of pissed me off. But that's the it was the brother's fault that they even got in that situation in the first place because he wanted to be nosy. And guess what he got? Got death. That's what he got. So I wasn't. I didn't feel bad for him when he got killed. And not, I've not seen Last House on the Left. I've seen the one with Jennifer Lawrence, but I don't remember what it's called. It's not The Last House on the Left. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it wasn't. The storyline is not what they just talked about on here. What other movies can you think of? I can't really think of any. If I do, it'd be ones with sequels like Hellraiser, uh, Jason, Freddy Krueger, the, the classics, <laughs> Halloween. <laughs> um, what are some of your favorite horror movies where evil wins? I've just seen Cabin in the Woods this year finally and I loved it so that would be one for me. Um, Drag Me to Hell is one of mine too. I it did the twist at the end got me because I was like oh she beat the lady yay because like I said that was so extreme for her to curse somebody for telling her hey you don't pay your mortgage I know your life's hard but I gotta do my job and I gotta I'm sorry I gotta tell you you gotta you gotta move you gotta find somewhere else to go and then curse somebody to death for that I was happy because I thought she won and then what a twist <laughs> but uh, thanks for watching the video don't for leave don't forget to leave a like 
a comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye. If you want me to get close to you, just tell me what to do, tell me what to do. If you want me to take over, just give me the